Welcome to the New Voices for the Theater 31st Annual Festival of New Works. My name is Heather Fox and I am the Program Director for New Voices. On behalf of Spark and the entire festival company, I thank you for supporting young artists' work. The play you are about to witness is Featherweight and the playwright's name is Catherine Sherrill. Act one, time, present day, setting. The stage is an adjoining kitchen slash living room setup. The kitchen is upstage, a layout of a fridge and table with chairs. Downstage is the living room layout of a sofa and coffee table. Lights up. Girl is standing in front of the open fridge, peering inside, searching for something to eat. I mean, I know how many calories a half cup of raspberries is. How many? 33. Um, a slice of bread is typically 120 calories with 24 carbohydrates. Small egg is 70 calories with 5 grams of protein. Two tablespoons of almond butter is 210 calories with 8 grams of protein. And a large apple. A large apple is 130 calories, 34 carbs, mostly sugars. And how much of that did you know before having to log your calories? I mean, the bread, obviously, but that seems like it would be common knowledge. Um, almond butter, I'd never had before, but it's only like a 10 or 20 calorie difference from peanut butter, depending on if it's natural or processed. And I originally thought Eggs were 70 calories, but those are just the large ones. What is it you like to tell people? That you accidentally starved yourself? This is hard enough already. What more do you want? Because eating is so difficult. So I must be making more of this than it is. So why don't they all try eating 2,300 calories a day when your stomach is smaller than the size of your fist and see how easy it is? Tell me, the pain I feel after eating is just something I fabricated. Well, it's not about pleasure, is it? No, no, it's, it's to fuel my body. So do it. I'm just, I'm just so sick of it all. All the numbers, the food logs, those, those stupid meetings, that scale and... I am so tired of eating. And that's whose fault? So suck it up. That's what I've been doing. I mean, all I want is to be done. And yet, your progress is slow moving. Shut up. You don't think I know that? I can't keep doing this. <laughs> but you will. You have to. No. No, I'm, I'm done being told what to eat and how much or when anymore. They can't make me. So maybe, maybe you don't want to get better. No. No, that isn't true. Prove it. Eat something. Mm. Hope you enjoy having a feeding tube stuck down your throat. No. No, that is not happening. Not to me. Because, because you're not one of them. Stop it anorexic oh, and just like that so willing to give in to be in pain suffer eating to end the doubts pathetic hmm. guess old habits die hard <laughs> enough enough I hate you Sticks and stones, malnourished, starved, a twig, a tiny, living skeleton, corpse like. One more. Anorexic. That's the biggest pile of BS. Well, no pain, no gain. What is there for me to gain? Wait. You're sick. Look in the mirror recently? Yeah. 
Wasn't much to see. Who's sick? Me. In so many ways. Heart palpitations, uh, possible jacked up liver, incessant shaking, screwy digestive tract, I, I shed, um, extreme weight loss, malnourished. I'm like a self made Barbie doll, pre serum Steve, as in Captain America. Yeah. What did he give himself? Polio? It's just a joke. Because who doesn't love a little self-deprecating humor? Just forget it, all right? I can do this all day. Just stop. Doesn't matter. What does? Self-made. A poor choice of words on your, be on your part. It always comes back to that. What is it people say? In life, there are no coincidences. I know. But do you? Is it true? No. I don't know. How can you not easily? That's not an answer. It's the only one I have. No, it's not. It is wrong. Say it. No. Say the real reason I can't. Why not? Because I... Go on. It's okay. No, it's not. Because if all they say about me is true, if I do have... If I, if I do have anorexia, then I did this to myself. I starved myself almost to the brink of death and nothing about that is okay. But it can be. You only have to admit it. Then and only then will all this get better. What exactly is better? What does a better me look like? You'll be prettier, like Dad says. You'll be more attractive when you get more weight on your bones. Mom won't be disgusted to look at you. It's grossing me out to look at you. Do they know what that's like? What that does? I disgust myself. But why? When I look in the mirror, I hate what I see. But there are times when I see myself, what I've become, And I don't want it to go away. So you did this to yourself. I didn't realize what I was doing. If I had, if I had, I would have, I would have asked for help. I never would have gone this far. So you did this to yourself. I did. The voice crouches down beside a girl, offers her the sandwich. Girl accepts, takes a bite. She savors it, chewing slowly and swallows. She breathes in, then releases the breath. Freedom. I'd like to invite all of our special guests, our audience members to come on. Videos on, let's give them a huge Round of applause. Thank you so much. I would like to invite you to stay with cameras on if you would like to participate in the talk back with our playwright. Andrew, if you'll kick us off. Catherine, <laughs> how has your play evolved during the process, including workshop last week and rehearsals this week? 
that is a very, very, it has evolved way more than I ever expected to. I actually, um, in the script before the workshop and everything, there was no like food involved. So the eating when the ending when girl goes and eats the sandwich, that wasn't in there. And there was a lot of rewriting of um, lines throughout it. But I mean, it, it was for the best because something even better came out of it than I had gone into this experience with. So that was pretty amazing. And I would say with um, going into the directing process, uh, definitely the voice and girl are actually, as I wrote it, to be played by two separate actors. And um, as you know, we went with one, so that was like definitely the, the biggest shift there. Thank you so much. Hey, I see one of our uh, playwrights has a question for Catherine. Yeah, so I actually wanted to know why you made that shift from two to one. Um, that might there were some better fielded. outside circumstances that affected that change a little bit. But I mean, everything happens for a reason. There are no coincidences, as I say and wrote in my play. So, I mean... Sophia just really like stepped up to the plate and, you know, brought everything that you could ever want in an actor and just like fully committed herself. So we are like, well, we can't not, not do this anymore. So that's how that came about. Excellent. Great job, Catherine. Uh, I see our playwright in residence wants to chime in, have a question. So uh, will you consider moving forward to have it only be played by one actress or will you go back to it being two? I'm curious. Mm, that is, that's a good question. Um, well, what, what was sort of funny about changing it to one actor is before um, everything happened with COVID-19, I was gonna perform this myself as a one woman show and um, that didn't happen because of, of the schools being closed down. So it was really odd for that to come out of this experience. So I think that um, I still am gonna keep it two separate actors just because um, I really would love the, the physical aspects of what I'd like put into this play to be realized one day. So yeah, keeping it two people. Go ahead and raise a hand if you have a question for Catherine. Hi, Catherine. Um, first, I wanted to thank you for telling this story. It really resonated with me and a lot of my personal experiences, and I don't see a lot of um, culture necessarily that is about this topic. So thank you for telling that story. I wanted to ask, um, what is something that you would hope that a person watching this play would take away from it? Um, I think for people like with this experience, that it's okay. Um, cause, cause the crazy thing about this play is um, when I wrote it, my intention was to be like, um, I don't have anorexia. Everyone thinks it, but it's not true. My diagnosis was wrong. And through the writing process, I actually came to the realization that I was like, oh man, it, it, it's true. I, I do have anorexia. So just like to accept that and know it's a part of who you are, but it is not who you are. And for um, people who don't understand their experience personally, <laughs> Oh, this, this, there's a lot of like layers to that part. Cause I know that um, going through it, there was family that didn't like get it, friends that were like, just eat a whole bunch of junk food and, and you'll get there. And just to have like, try to understand and know that um, if you do have someone you love going through this, that it's understandable that you want them to eat and to get to that 
healthy levels that you want them to again, but it's not as simple as that. And um, sometimes words, even though they're meant with love, are, they're not received like that. And it, it sort of makes the whole process more difficult. So just be delicate and try to try to listen more than than speaking. That, that's what I would say. Catherine, that was so incredibly powerful. Thank you. Thank you for this beautiful play. I, I'm not cutting it off. I just had to chime in because you really touched my heart. Um, I see Susan would like to ask. <laughs> I just want to make a statement. Um, I think Sophia did a beautiful job with that, especially if it wasn't the original intention. And she really, I've known Sophia since she was a little girl, and she really got me caught up in in what she was talking about and in what was happening. So bravo to her, too. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. yeah. Laura, the question? I do. Um, thank you for this. Um, what do you what do you imagine and dream of next in as a, your artist journeys with this play? I mean, I what I want to do before, like it's on my bucket list as an artist, is I want to do this myself. And um, but I would really like to take this like as far as I can, because um, you know this isn't like a story that is, is out there as much. It's one of those those topics that people are uncomfortable talking about, and they're not exactly sure how to approach it. So you know, is that however far that I can take this, you know, to festivals and things like that, if I could like even take it to like schools rather than I, I guess like one of those sort of cheesy um, health videos that they show you sometimes, I just like to share it as much as I can everywhere that I can that I get the opportunity to. Heather? Yes, Susan. Um, I'd like to just ask the playwright for my own understanding. Uh, so one character is the child battling this issue. The other character, the way it was presented, was her other voice. So if it's two characters, is it two versions of the same character? Do you understand what I'm asking? Or is it a therapist? Or is it a parent? Or is it, or is it two I, of the I, same? I understand. Yeah, um, it's like we all have that inner voice in our head. Right. That, um, it, I, I explain in like, uh, my character description that it's sort of like the good and, and bad angel that we each have on our shoulder that sometimes the voice is, as the other character is called, um, it just browbeats girl and it's just trying to get her to understand this and there are those moments where she sort of like sympathizes with her a little bit and it's just like that voice that there's, there's no telling what it is going to say to you but it it's definitely connected to you but disconnected at the same uh time if that makes sense because it's it's not like you're Uh, what is the word for this? Like your foremost conscience, but it's the one in the back of your mind that impacts yeah. certain things that you do. Okay. Chelsea Burt. Hello. Fantastic work. Um, my question is, I know that this process is really intense and a lot of learning and growth happens. And um, I'm curious if there's any tidbit, any principle, any tool that you know that you're going to be putting in your toolbox as a playwright and artist after this that you either gained from last week in the sort of, um, you know, true workshopping, you know, playwrights room or in the rehearsal room that you feel like is going to become part of your process moving forward as a playwright and an actor. Hmm. Um, let's see. There, there was one thing that uh, Jamie said, something about, like, don't be afraid to kill your, your darlings. And um, she's the one who actually, like, suggested 
that I introduced like physical food into the play. And I was like, I mean, someone else, my, my, uh, my teacher that had originally like taken me through this process when I wrote it at my school had suggested that at the time. And I'd been like, no, I'm not going to mess with what I have. Cause there was a fear of like messing with the original lines that I had done, like messing with the rhythm to it. And I mean, if I, if I hadn't, taken that advice that she gave I wouldn't have the show that you all have just seen so I mean that was that was really a big thing and um as an actor let's see I mean this show has just really like taught me a whole lot through like this entire journey of um all the different levels there are to explore and to not be afraid to explore any of them because, you know, if, if you let that fear control you, you have no idea what it could be holding you back from. Heather, that takes us to the end of our allotted time for the talk back. What a beautiful note to end it on. No fear. You're incredible, Catherine. Thank you for sharing your work. <laughs> Thank you, Shania. Thank you, Sophia. Great team. <laughs>